thank you so much for having me at Open Hardware Summit and sharing with you about the intersectional field combining fashion and open source technologies. If you have stayed with open source hardware for a while, you may remember the good old days back around 2016 when there was a craze about IoT and wearables. I made a lot of interesting things using off-the-shelf open source hardware. For example, back in 2017, we could already implement simple machine learning in fashion design. This is a dress I made using Arduino 101, which has a pattern matching engine and accelerometer. The fabrics is digitally printed with a page of my graphic novel, a scientist and her robot looking into the telescope with a wave of my hand, my clothes remembers my gestures and cause the corresponding constellations to show up in the night sky. You can also make lots of interesting accessories with small microcontrollers. Here I embed a lily pad in an electronics nail art. I made all kinds of designs like dresses that have embedded LEDs that blink with your heart rate, change colors with your brainwave, detect air pollution, environmental data, and biometrics which reflect on the clothing's motion, sound, and all kinds of behaviors. I started this work as a hobby, purely to merge my passions in both technology and fashion. There were inspiring designers before me that had done the same thing, but the exploration was still very new to the world. So lots of media, fashion shows, exhibits featured my designs. It turned out that this kind of work was shocking to the broader society. It was quite interesting to notice the reactions from people when my work got large exposures. They asked, how can someone combine fashion and technology? How can she go around having fun while I have to do my boring jobs? Obviously, my work provoked some conflicting mindsets and boundaries between fields, which I did not expect. But as makers, we all know how this is done. We've got technologies that allow us to do intersectional work. There are microcontrollers and single board computers that are small enough to embed into clothing, and they can be connected and mixed and matched with all kinds of outputs like LEDs and displays corresponding to data collected by sensors and monitors. And the components can establish connectivity through conductive threads or wirelessly. You can imagine with these components, anything is possible. I learned embedded electronics and programming from the open source maker community. I contributed back to the maker community by making my projects open source too. However, the creativity was confined within a small community. Most people don't even know these technologies existed. When people outside the maker community saw my work, they, they always asked, why have I not seen these in the market? Where can I buy your designs? Many years passed and the question of reaching a broader audience still remains. In fact, the wearables and IoT fields had hit the chasm after its initial buzz. By now, the concept of technology adoption cycle and the hype curve should be familiar for people in any tech industry. When a field is in the hype phase, that's usually when prototyping can be easily done. If it lacks scalability for tra transitioning into a productivity phase, it must be hitting a bottleneck. When I discovered the bottleneck in 2017, driven by curiosity, I started looking into manufacturing. Turned out fashion manufacturers didn't know how to do electronics. Electronics manufacturers didn't know how to do fashion. And the technologies that are truly wearable that's needed were not ready. 
The open source components are great for prototyping and doing research. But to go beyond that, it usually takes 10 to 20 years to scale into industrial productivity. But even that, it still needs to reach the public for adoption. And the public needs to understand the technology. So to move our beloved wearable tech out of the chasm, several steps needed to be done simultaneously. One, develop ready to wears, not just demos for shows. Two, develop off the shelf components so more creative designers can get their hands on them. Three, develop scalable processes so we can not only turn zero to one, but turn one into repeatable products. Four, also, we need to let the designers and the public be able to customize the final products so we can create what people really want. And we don't waste time and resources making something people actually don't want. So I started exploring how to convert handmade prototypes to be reproducible products. I founded Art by Physicists specifically to develop end products that are available for anyone to enjoy the latest wearable tech, putting the future to the present. What is Art by Physicist? To understand it, just consider all of these fantastic creations. Imagine yourself wearing a solar-powered overcoat or dress, which lets you charge any electronic device on the go, ensuring that you never run out of battery. Or a heated reversible coat, exquisitely beautiful and perfect for wearing less yet staying warm, heating up within 60 seconds. Or a dress with an out-of-this-world design that you can customize by uploading your own images, videos, and GIFs from your phone. Unleash your creativity or your own personalized Starry Night Constellation, which lights up on a shirt. You can match these outfits and any other ensemble with the Paired Flowers Bluetooth wearable brooches, which let you interact with your family and friends. The possibilities are as endless as science itself. So all of these are final products available that anyone can purchase. I wanted to add a bit of different color to the tech world building a creative brand, using technologies to do design, making manufacturing processes open source to inspire and educate. As you have seen, my inspirations come from nature and science. It has always been the brand's mission to donate back to STEAM education and environmental protection. It focuses on women's wear with a mission to promote an intellectual representation of women. At the end of the day, I do not think a new business should be created purely for making money. It is the long-term social impact that matters with the goal to bring happiness to people. In fact, through this work, I discovered the ugly side of fashion industry. There are many creative independent designers like me who need to go through huge barriers to bring their ideas into reality. Meanwhile, access of goods are produced and dumped in landfill every single day. It turned out that the fashion industry is one of the largest polluters in the world. It produces 10% of carbon footprint, while 30% of clothes ever made are never sold. How is this even allowed? Well, it's because the existing fashion industry has been running on a backward manner. Designers want to create because it is in their nature to create. But consumers don't know what they want until they see it's available. So the designers need to produce an inventory upfront because manufacturers need volume to make a profit. The established supply chains are built to support mass production with exploited labor, while creativity and small runs are not encouraged. In fact, if you've done any kind of production, you've probably run into a similar problem. Every industry has a holy grail. In terms of getting fashion to true sustainability, it means we need to get to a technological level where we only produce something when someone needs it, while supporting creativity. This isn't just about making clothes. 
It also has long-term implications in education, workforce enablement, and economics. Coming from a scientific background with semiconductor manufacturing experience and the open source mindset, I couldn't help but wonder if we can apply some of the methodologies in making technological products to help the fashion industry be more efficient, reduce waste and pollution, and support creativity. So I've set out to build a completely new way for fashion to be designed, manufactured, and sold, making the most cutting-edge technologies available for all creators to do on-demand mass customization. Now at Art by Physicist, all designs are digitally created without needing to make physical inventories. Then we make the designs readily available for purchase online through digital representations. By making our samples digitally, we actually can let customers provide their measurements for the garments to be specifically created for their body shapes. Here you see our Mew collection last year where we made custom avatars for each customer in browser software vStitcher then custom printed our customers' cats on the fabrics with a little bit of help by Dali as well to personalize each item. I use crowdfunding to launch new collections, which proves that made-to-order approach is a viable go-to-market strategy to be more ethical and sustainable in manufacturing practice and to make tech fashion a reality. So now I am announcing an exciting opportunity for all of you to be able to do the same. The 2023 Tech Fashion Design Challenge on Hexter.io. Art by Physicists and Hexter are collaborating this year together with suppliers and manufacturers to help you bring your ideas to life from design to manufacturing and all the way to the market. Starting from today, you will be able to submit your design ideas on Hexter you can make prototypes and document your project before May 31st. In June, we will select five top projects as semi-finalists. Among the participants, we will have public voting for your favorite project. Then the five semi-finalists will be commissioned by Art by Physicists and enter a Kickstarter campaign. This way, your ideas will be validated, ordered by backers, and manufactured. Your ultimate reward will be to bring your ideas into reality and receive earned income from the market. There are two hardware requirements you can choose from. This makes sure your ideas are manufacturable. You can use either or both of these components. One is the organic solar films from Asker. You can design your own solar film shapes or choose from existing modules provided by Asgard. 
as I have demonstrated here on the top is a custom module. I designed the shape and prototype. The bottom one is using an existing module that ASCA provided. This is the very first clothing with organic solar films embedded on them that are available for sale. You will work with you to manufacture your ideas into final products the same way. The other option is to use the LEDs from Enlighten. These components do not need soldering or coating. Anyone can plug and play and make any kind of lighting effects in your clothes. have the chance to meet some of our amazing judges and influential tech fashion designers during the contest at our community events. So now here is how to submit your ideas to the contest. This will drive the fashion industry to be open source and sustainable. Go to this link, please read the details carefully and we have lots of useful information and tutorials to help you bring your ideas into reality. Can fashion be part of open source? The answer is yes. And together, we will make it sustainable, creative, and ethical. Thank you so much. Thank you.